let me then move on to another example that involves a beam. So I'm going to start with a simple example. where I'll be looking at a simply supported beam, pin support and roller that is subject to a thousand Newton force right at its center. So this beam is 10 meters long. So this would be five meters, this would be five meter. This is uh, made of structured steel. And if you cut anywhere, this has a prismatic cross section. If I cut here and throw out, my section is a rectangular section that is one centimeter in width and 10 centimeters in height. So that's a rectangular section. And uh, please note that when I have a beam like this that has a rectangular section, there is a weak axis and there is a strong axis. This is the strong axis of the section. And I want it to bend about a strong axis. So when I construct a beam like this. Unlike a bookshelf, I want it to be sitting on the one centimeter and loaded on the one centimeter, not the 10 centimeters. So the bending moment is resisted by the strong axis, the red axis that you see here. So what we want to do again, we want to use ANSYS. to find one support the actions. If I call this <clears throat> A and B, two, we want to find the displacement under the load or at C. Three, we want to draw V and M diagrams. Or find the maximum sigma and maximum tau in the beam. Okay, so this is what we want to accomplish here. So I'm going to go to my ANSYS and I'm going to go to my project. This is where I do my management. So I'm done here. Before we do anything, let's save this uh, new project. So I'm going to come here and save and I'm going to keep the name 2020-1008. And I'm gonna do, this was my, our first example. 
And now I am going to start a new static structure analysis. So I can uh, drag it or double click. I would do the same thing. So I'm dragging here and I'm going to give this a name. So I'm going to come here and uh, rename this. And I'm going to call it beam example. All right. So I really don't have to do anything with the engineering data because by default, I have structure steel. But the one thing I want to do here is I want to be watchful of my units. In uh, our first project, we were using uh, US customer units. Now I'm switching units. So I want to come here, go to my units and switch to SI. I'm using standard international. So if you look here at uh, the properties, if I look at the uh, structure steel and I look at isotropic elasticity, I have a modulus of elasticity of 200 giga Pascal, right? So this is that of a structure steel. Now, uh, this is the material I'm going to be using, so I can simply use this structure steel. So I'm going to go back to project and the units, and I want to display the values in project units. I make sure my units are SI. Next, I'm going to go to the geometry. So please note the first step we do here is we define the static structure analysis in workbench. We also make sure we have the material that we're going to use for our problem. Next, I'm going to go to the geometry. And this is where we define our geometry or edit our geometry. I'm going to right click on this to make sure I choose which CAD package I'm going to be using. And in this class, we are using design modeler. So I'm going to choose new design modeler geometry. So I'm going again through the steps that we used earlier. And this is launching design modeler. Here comes design modeler. Now uh, for my beam, what do I need to do as far as geometry is concerned? I'm going to have to create three vertices, not only two, even though I have one line, but I want to make sure I create a vertex at C because I want to be able to select that vertex and apply this 1000 Newton to it. So we have to plan with the end in mind. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to go to create and start creating three points. And I want to make sure I'm using manual inputs. So my first point is at the origin. That's good. Generate. So I have here point A. I can look here on the XY plane and we are going to put our other points here. So I'm going to create and I'm going to go point. And again, I'm going to use manual input. And my second point is going to have ordinates. If you look at the beam, it's going to have a five, zero, and zero. My second, my third point is going to be 10, zero, and zero. So here is my second point. And I'm going to put manual input and change my X to five, generate. Here comes my second point. My last point will be create point. I'm going to change this to manual input and put my X ordinate as a 10, generate, and I'm going to pan here to my three points. So these are my three points. If you look at the ruler, this should be five meters. This is also another five meters. Next, I'm going to go to concepts, line from points, and I'm going to start defining my line concept. I select my first point at A, and then I select my second point at C. I say apply. I use control button to select my second point. Apply. Here is my line for AB. 
generate, here is my line. I'm gonna go again to concept, line from points, my second line that extends between C and B. So I'm gonna right, left click here on point C, control button, and then a left mouse click at point B, and I'm gonna go apply, and here comes my line two. I have to generate it, generate here my line two. Please note, when I created line one, I use add material. When I created line two, I use add material as well. Is this okay? It is in this case because this beam has a prismatic section. It's the same section throughout. So it is okay to have one part and one body. And you're gonna see that on the next step. When I come here and go to concept and choose a cross section, I define a rectangular cross section that has a width of one centimeter. And now my height is gonna be 10 centimeters. So I have a 0 0.01 and a 0 0.1. And uh, here is my section. So you see I have here a rectangular section and uh, this rectangular section is still not associated with my line body. So if I look at my line body or even go out there, uh, let's say we are done. Yeah, this line body does not have a cross section selected. Does not have a cross section selected. So if you look here, this is uh, an isometric view. And I'm looking at just the line body. It does not have a section associated with it. So I'm gonna come here and select with this line body, rectangular one. Now, should you have an unprismatic beam, you wanna make sure to create two line bodies to allow you to assign different cross section to each segment, but here I only have one line body and one cross section throughout. So I assigned here my rectangular section and uh, you see here it is still showing in yellow. And uh, if I go to view and choose to show the cross section solids, look at this, look at how this section is being oriented. This looks more like a bookshelf. And I said, we want to load our beam along our strong axis. So this is how we want to have our beam oriented. So how do I change the orientation? I'm going to go and, uh, to my line body and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say select unaligned line edges. And please note that this, because we do not have them aligned, that's why we have this yellow check mark. So if I go select unaligned, it is say, showing here, by the way, by default, let me show you that. By default, the Y axis of the section is oriented in the same direction as the global Z axis. So the Y, this green represents the Y of the section is oriented along the Z of the geometry here, of the default axis. So, and it says here, cross section alignment, and it says plus Z by default. In order to fix that, I really want my Y to be oriented in the same direction as my Y axis. So how do I do that? I can come here and it says alignment mode and it's set to by selection. There is another option to say a vector. So if I use the selection option, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna select my, oops. Select unaligned edges. If I choose that, I'm gonna select, come here and select my Y axis, positive Y axis, you see I can, toggle between positive and negative. 
So I have the positive y-axis. Of course, in this case, it's not going to make a difference. The rectangular section is symmetric. And I'm going to say apply. And let me zoom in and let you see what happened. Now look at my cross-section. Now this beam is going to be loaded about the strong axis. And please note, the yellow check mark changed to a green check mark. So now I have my beam that uh, if I load in the vertical direction, is going to be loaded along its strong axis. I'm done here with my geometry. And I come here and say update project and go to model when this is updated. Okay, I'm going to go to workbench and I want to start working on the model. So I'm going to double click the model. And this is starting mechanical. And a quick check here of the units. We have uh, meters. And uh, if I go to uh, tools, units, I have metric is selected where we have the meters and newtons. That's what we want. And uh, I want to show my uh, vertices. So I'm going to go to display, vertex, show vertices. I'll be looking in the XY plane. I'm going to focus on my part. So this is the part I have. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, one of the first steps you want to do here is you want to go to your parts. If I go to geometry and uh, I go uh, specifically to my line body and I look here under material assignment, structure steel is there. So I have the correct material assigned. Uh, if you go to the mesh, when I select update project, it already created the find these elements for me in the two pieces. Uh, so I have my mesh. So we are in the model part. We have assigned material property to the line body and we created a mesh. So step number five, according to our workbench steps, would be the setup. And this setup involves defining our constraints and applying our loads. So I'm going to go here to my static structure or setup, and I'm going to start applying my constraints. So if I go here to environment to pull the static structure menu, that allows me to apply supports and loads. I'm going to start by supports. And uh, I want to mention here that we are going to be applying supports and loads to vertices. So I can come here and select vertex as the selection method. So I go to supports. Now, clearly, this is not a fixed support. It's a pin support. And this is here is seriously important because if you put a fixed support, it's not going to allow our beam to deflect the way we expect it. I expect my beam to deflect like this. And you see there is an angle here. Now, clearly, there is a rotation. This beam has a rotation like this. I'm not going to see this rotation if I apply a fixed support. So what we want to apply here from the supports, we want to apply a simply supported support. And this option is available when we're doing beams. So I go like simply supported and I select vertex A and I say apply. Okay. How about point B? At point B, we have a roller. What is this roller doing? It's preventing translation in the y direction. 
it's only allowing, allowing displacement in the x direction. Now, please remember, when I am showing you the model here, I am working primarily in the x, y plane. When I go to ANSYS, I have to be mindful that when working in, X, in ANSYS, I'm working in space in X, Y, and Z. What does that imply? We want to make sure that we don't have any rigid motion in the Z direction. Now, this simple support is taking care of constraining translation in X, Y, and Z. Now, when I come to apply my support here, I want to apply translation in the X direction, but I want to prevent it in the Y direction as well as the Z direction. How I'm going to do that? I'm going to use a displacement, similar to what we did in our example. So I'm going to go displacement and apply this displacement to point B, but I want to make sure that this is free only in the X direction and it's fixed in Y, so I'm going to put zero, and it's fixed in the Z, so I'm going to put zero also. Oops. Yeah, zero in the Z. So you look here at it, it is free in the X, zero in Y, zero in Z. And I want to make sure my geometry is selected, apply, so I have it here at B. So if I look at my static structure, I have two supports here. Are these going to be sufficient to prevent rigid body motion? The answer would be yes if I'm working in the XY plane. And uh, as, as far as translation, because it also takes care of rotation about the Z direction, rotation about the Z direction between the two supports. So this beam cannot rotate about the Z direction. It cannot rotate about Y. But how about rotation about X? Because remember, I'm using here a beam model that is capable to rotate or spin about itself. This beam being pin supported at A, roller support at B, can spin about the X axis. So if I attempt to solve this problem, it is going to fail like this. And I'm going to show you in a second before we fix the problem. So let me apply my loads. So under the loads, I have a simple force applied at the center or at point C. And I'm going to define this force using components. So I'm going to come here to my components. And I have a minus 1,000 Newton or 1,000 Newtons applied downwards. So you see here the icon. I have the arrow going downwards to represent the force at point C. So if I go to my static structure, I have two supports and the loads. If I attempt to solve this problem, it is going to fail. So if I come here and say solve, and this is, by the way, a common mistake. It's building my mathematical model. And I got here a warning, solver pivot warning or errors have been encountered. Why am I having, I'm getting these errors? Because my part is free to spin. So when uh, ANSYS put together the global stiffness matrix, it knows that I do not have enough boundary conditions to keep it. So how do I fix that? I want to make sure that rotation of the beam about the x-axis is constrained. So I'm going to go back to my static structure, and I'm going to go to my supports. And if you click down on supports, I do have a fixed rotation option. Now, we want to be careful because I don't want to fix rotation about the z-axis or the y-axis, I want the beam to be free to rotate in these directions. But we just want to prevent it from rotating or spinning about its own axis. So I'm going to go fix rotation. And at the very outer tip where I have my pin support, I'm going to put a rotation, a fixed rotation, but I'm not going to fix rotation about z for sure. 
So I'm going to change that from fix to free. I'm not going to fix rotation about y. I'm going to change this to free. But I'm only going to fix rotation about x. And when we are looking at the results, I'm going to show you that this has zero impact. It's just there for numerical purposes. Let's try to solve now. Building the mathematical model, working on a solution. And this time I get this green check mark, meaning I do have a solution. And by the way, there is a solution information here, but this is different than the results we want to look at. So I want to define the results to what we want to do here. So I'm going to go to solution and I want to define a probes to find our support reaction. So I go probe. And I do a force reaction. And the first one is for the, at the simple support. Next, I'm going to go probe and I'm going to put another force reaction at the displacement. While we're doing this, I'm going to put a probe to find the moment reaction as a result of my fixed rotation. And really, this should be a zero to make sure it does not affect the results. And uh, number two, we were trying to look at displacement at B. So I'm going to go probe deformation, and I'm going to select the vertex at, I'm sorry, displacement at C. So this is the center point. I'm going to apply, and I'm going to be looking at the total displacement. Number three, we wanted to draw shear and moment diagram. And uh, under beam results, there is a shear and moment diagram. But this shear and moment diagram feature does require defining a path. You know, every time we're drawing shear and moment diagram, I say start from the left and go to the right, start at zero, diagram should close at the right. So I have to define a path. A path is going to be done under construction geometry. So if I go to model, insert, and I'm going to go here to construction geometry and select a path. So now under the uh, outline, I have a construction geometry and I have a path. I'm going to go to my path and I want to make sure to define a path using edges and not using points. So I'm going to select edge. I want to make sure I can select edges. So I'm going to come here in my select options, and I'm going to select edge, and I'm going to go from A, B, A, C to C, B. So I select the two edges. First one, and then I use control button and the left mouse click to select B, C, and now I'm going to say apply. And you see here is my path from point A to point B, from point one to point two. So now I have this path defined that is just called path, right? I can also come here and rename it as the path for A, B. Okay, so that's my path. Now I'm gonna go back to solution and I'm gonna go to beam results, shear and moment diagrams, and I'm gonna come here. You see the first thing it's asking for is a path. And now I've defined path AB, so I'm going to select path AB. And we can look at the total shear and moment diagram, right? So I can come here and have a total shear and moment diagram. I can also right click on this and say duplicate without results. And instead of looking at the total, I can choose directional. And I want to point out a bug here in ANSYS that these are flipped. We should be looking at VY and MZ. But if you try that, you're not going to get the right results. So I'm going to go for VZ, MY. I'm going to get the right results, but the directions are not going to be as we expect. So I'm going to show here a total and also directional for the shear moment. The last thing we want to find are the stresses in the beam. So I'm going to go to, uh, sorry, toolbox and select the beam tool. And this would allow me to look at direct stress, combined stress, and then we understand what these mean. 
And I'm going to right click on this and also under beam tool, add a stress and just simply put minimum bending. And I'm going to do this again, right click beam tools, stresses, and I'm going to do maximum bending. So we have all five different type of stresses. Now for this problem, what do we expect? I expect my direct stress to be zero. My bending stress, if direct stress is zero, my combined stress is gonna be the same as bending stress. And we're gonna prove that in a second. So I've defined all the results that we wanna look at. And now I'm just simply gonna click solve to look at these results. All right, you see my deformed beam and I can play an animation. Is this what we expect our beam to do? Indeed, yes. That's what we expected our beam to do. So our beam is deforming. My maximum displacement is right at the center. So we have this symmetric behavior. And uh, if I wanna read, look, start looking at the probes, we have this deformation probe, and this is gonna give me the displacement of the beam at point C. So I can report that 0 0.12504 0 meters. We also wanted to find the reactions at A. I'm getting 500 Newton. Yes, we applied 1000. I expected 500 to go to the left and another 500 to go to the right. Let's look at the right. I look here and I read 500 Newton. How about this moment reaction? Again, I said this should be really nothing. And let's look here. The moment reaction is five times 10 to the minus eight, which is practically zero. That's why I said this fixed rotation is not gonna have any impact on the results. It is just there for numerical purposes. Next, let's look at shear and moment diagrams. All right. At the very top, we're looking at the total. Remember the total. So while the shear is going to be changing from positive to negative along the length of the beam, but the total or the magnitude is always going to be a 500 newtons throughout the beam. If I start looking at the bending moment, as I expect, I'm going to get the maximum bending moment at the center of the beam at point C. And I'm getting here 2,500 Newton meter at five meters, as expected. And uh, if you look here below that, there is also this elastic curve, but it's just showing the total. So you see the direction here we know that this should be displacing in the negative y direction. If you look at the directional shear and moment, this is more what you expect, but flipped. You see like 500 negative than positive. I call this should be positive 500, go straight, then I have negative 1000, then 500 and up. That's why I say, and this should be really Vy not Vz. So I think this is a bug that I think ANSYS should uh, fix. Only, um, and even they're referring to the displacement as UZ, when we know that we do not have a Z displacement. The bending moment is, uh, should also be positive. It's shown here as negative. It's shown as uh, uh, MY, and this should really be MZ. So that's why I say there is a bug here. Uh, displacement here is displayed downwards but it's shown as UZ when it should be UI. So these are the shear moment displacement curves. And by the way, you can look at tabular data that you can also uh, import into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, finally, we wanna look at stresses. If I look at direct stress, perfect zero everywhere because my beam is primarily in bending. If I look at maximum bending, yes. I'm getting a maximum bending stress of 1500 megapascal at the center. That's the maximum. If you look at the minimum, 
I'm getting 1,500 negative megapascal at the center. This should be the same as combined stresses At the center, I'm getting the 1500 megapascal. And at the center, I'm also getting the minimum 1500 megapascal. So this is everything we want to get from this uh, problem. And I think this is a nice one that showed us how to do some of the features. Now, uh, I want to refer to homework seven in a second here. So this is homework seven that you're expected to do over the weekend. Now, uh, please keep in mind, this is prismatic beam that had loads in the Y direction, in the Z direction. When you model this beam, you're only gonna model from center line to center line. So I have a point, a point, a point, and a point, because we are focusing on modeling the beam. We do not have to worry about the pulleys. We are not looking at the behavior of the pulleys, but we are looking to find stresses and the formation of the shaft. We are focused on the shaft. So I'm gonna need to model OABC, which is a prismatic beam of a circular cross section that has a diameter of one inch. Please make sure to use the proper material properties for a cold drone 1018 steel. You should be able to compare these results to the one that you got when you solved this problem in homework number one. I want to mention here that in addition to the 350 pound force applied in the Y direction, T1 plus T2 in the Z direction, you are going to have a torque applied, a torque applied at A and a torque applied at B. How do we apply these torques? I'm going to go back to my uh, beam example here and mess with it a little bit. If I go to static structure, I was able to apply a force, but I can also apply a moment. So I can come here and do a moment. Let's pretend I want to apply a torque. I'm going to select applying a torque at point B. I'm sorry, point C. So I'm going to put a torque here. And under moment, I'm going to change from vector to components. And I'm going to select, put a moment for a torque. This has to be about the X axis. I'm going to put 10,000 Newton meter. Now, uh, if you look in the isometric direction and zoom here, you see that the torque, this is applied in the positive x direction. Now, to keep this in equilibrium and does not do not make sure I do not get a reaction, the torque, actually, we can, uh, we can keep it this way. Uh, no, this is about the x axis and we're constraining it here, so this should be fine. So now, if I solve the problem with this torque, Now, my direct stresses are not going to be affected, right? If I look at uh, my uh, bending stresses, see, they're not affecting either. They're not affected either, right? Uh, the force reaction should also be the same. But now, if I look at my moment reaction, I should get this 10,000 Newton meter, which we do, right? Now, uh, this is in torque, even though my results as far as bending has not been changed, but I expect to get a torsional shear stress. So if I look under solution and I look at beam results and torsional moments, if I solve for these torsional moments, now you look here, I have this 1000 in this part of my beam. So this is how you are going to approach homework number seven, very similar to this beam, but you're going to be applying the torques 
So you're going to take this uh, 300 minus 50. So I get 250 times the four inch radius. So I have 1000 pound force inches applied at A and the opposite of it applied at B. So you really your fixed rotation at O should have no reaction, should have almost zero. Next, you also want to work on homework number eight. And if I look at homework number eight, Homework number eight, you are given the shaft with an overhang, which is something you've also seen before, but you are asked to use a stepped shaft. Now, if I'm focused on the shaft, and please remember, this is no longer 1.25 inch diameter, it's not the prismatic. I'm gonna use the 1.3, the 2.5, and the 1.3. What I wanna point out is when I'm using a beam model, I'm not really looking at the details of the stresses at the straps and the stress concentration like we're going to do when we use solid models. So what I want to focus on is the center line to center line. So from O to A to C to B. I'm going to use the 16, the 14, and the 9. And I'm, in my model, I'm not going to model the step. I'm just going to call it from A to A, from OA, or this segment OA has a diameter of 1.3 inches. And that's why when you are using, when you are creating your part, when you are creating the line body for AC, you want to use add frozen, add frozen. So if you go to design modeler, here. In design modeler, when I created my first line body, I use add material. When you're using the step shaft, you want to change this from add material to add frozen to allow you to have multiple cross sections. Because when you look carefully, you want AC to have a different circular section of 2.5 inch diameter. You want uh, B, CB to have a diameter of 1.3 inches, same as OA. But you do not want to worry about the step at O, the step at A, the step at uh, C, and the step at B. So simply, you're going to have three line bodies, but you're going to have different cross section to capture the behavior of a step shaft. Again, we are focused here on the overall behavior of the shaft, but not necessarily the stress concentration at the steps. We're going to look at this when we start using solid model. Other than that, this is going to be very similar the, to homework number seven. And that's why this week, we, it looks like we have three homeworks, but as you can see, homework and seven and eight, you're just gonna be setting the model like we did today in class. It shouldn't take you like 30 minutes. Of course, the learning part may take you a little bit more as you try to do what I did today. But once you set that, you set your shaft in design modeler, you're gonna be applying forces directly to point A you're going to apply them to the vertex. You're going to apply the vertical component, 300 cosine 20. So this is going to be in the y direction. But at the same time, you're going to apply the component in the z direction, which is 300 sine 20. You're going to apply a force at B in the z and in the y as well. Uh, you're also going to apply the torque at A torque at A that uh, in this case is going to be in the negative X direction at A and at B is going to be in the positive X direction. And then everything else is very similar, like what is expected from you is very similar to what we just did with the 
uh, beam example that I just did. Support reaction, support reaction, depending moment about Z axis, Y axis. Please be careful uh, with this Z axis, Y axis because of the uh, uh, mistake that ANSYS have. So make sure these are making sense to you. Maximum total bending moment, this should be straightforward. Again, we can get these bending moments uh, in ANSYS from the, if I look at the solution from beams, I can look at bending moments. And uh, by the way, when you do these bending moments, you get to look at total. Uh, you can also change from total bending moment to directional bending moment where you get to choose the axis. I can do Y axis or Z axis for bending moment. So we can define these, like for, let's do one here for uh, the purpose of, if I do the Z axis and I can come here and rename it based on definition, I can solve. And this is giving me the uh, directional bending moment about the Z axis. Now, uh, this should be the total. And uh, please note that uh, this is looking at uh, almost zero, which again, this is why I say this, there is an error. If I change this to the Y, that will give me the correct answers. Really the moment here should be about Z, not Y. So I think th this is definitely about an answers. If I come here and solve using Z axis, now, uh, you clearly see here the 2,500, uh, but it's shown as negative. This is the what I expect as the maximum bending moment. So please be careful when you're defining these to solve uh, your uh, homework problems, because this is what you're gonna try to attempt to do. Uh, for these two problems, please always compare your results to your hand calculations. And uh, don't do the mistake of using the 1.25 inch diameter. We're using the prismatic. So I'm using 1.3, 2.5, and 1.3. Uh, deflection in the y direction at A, total deflection at A. So you're gonna you be using uh, pr probes here. Maximum axial stress. This is the same as the direct stress. Maximum combined stress is the direct stress and the bending. Of course, we do not expect to see any direct stress, so I can tell you right off my head, this should be zero. And uh, as you solve these homework seven and eight, you're gonna be taking the quiz and inputting your results here for a quick uh, feedback. At the end of the, quick, uh, the quiz, I ask you to submit a WBPZ file, an archive file. So after you finish your work, your work in Workbench, please make sure to go like file, save it, and make sure you archive it and submit the archive file. So I go here and I wanna make sure to use archive. This archive is the one that's gonna create a WBPZ. And please make sure when you're creating that to include your name and the assignment number. So if you come here, you will put like, I would put like Barsoon and put like homework number eight or homework number seven and go save archive. Once you create this WBPZ through the quiz in Canvas, you, I want you to upload the file. So just in case you don't get the correct answer, this would allow me or allow my graders to give you uh, proper uh, feedback to make sure uh, you can learn from your mistakes should you have any. I hope that you all uh, get them all correct. And I hope that this uh, session is useful to help you complete homework seven and eight uh, and over the weekend. Please remember the due midnight on Sunday. So you still have another four days to work on them and they really should not take much time. Uh, before I let you go, I'll be happy to take any questions. Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions should you have any. All right, it looks like everyone is doing good.
Okay, enjoy uh, using ANSYS over the weekend. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you again all on Tuesday. Thank you.